This is our $500 Civic. It's got 400,000 miles on the clock. It's got a salvage title. The windshield wipers don't turn off. And it's got four wet trash bags for suspension. So today we're gonna to be installing $4,000 worth of suspension upgrades on our $500 Civic. We're gonna be installing coilovers like these. We're gonna be installing sway bars like these. And we're gonna be installing whatever the heck this thing is that you see hanging off the bottom of every Civic ever. I'm Zach, welcome to Donut. I'm a Honda boy now. So I've never really been a Honda guy. I've never owned a Honda. I've never owned a Civic or an Integra, and I've always wanted one. And I really like the EG, which is the generation that this is. You know, I really haven't driven it much. I drove it up here today. That was my first time driving it. This is the slowest car I've ever driven. So let's, uh, let's take a look under the hood and see what, uh, what the reason for that is. So this is a D-series uh, four-cylinder. Look at the size of the intake tube. It's like, it's like a straw. So this is one of those cars where you're never gonna break the speed limit, but you're gonna have a lot of fun. So I'm excited to, to do some stuff to it, like the suspension that we've got planned. But first, I just wanna take a look around. It's not in the best shape, but that's okay. She's got character. But it's not about how things look, it's about what's underneath that counts. And I'm not sure that what's underneath of this car is any good either, but we are gonna have some fun with it. So right now, let's go hop down the canyon, run this thing around, get used to it, get to know it, you know? Then we'll take it back to the shop and start upgrading some stuff. For now, my goals are just to get it handling a little bit more like a go-kart, maybe make it look a little cooler, but I also wanna be able to get into the, the Honda community. I hear there's a thing called VTech Club out here, which is a group of Honda owners that get together and hang out and, you know, have Honda meets. I need to uh, bask in all of its stock glory right now. Get a feeling for how it feels right now with what might be the world's softest suspension. I did feel very leaned over and like the whole car was on the front left tire pretty much. <laughs> yeah, there's no tachometer so you just shift when it starts, you know, banging off the limiter. So it feels crazy how much I've got my foot down. I'm pedaled right now and I'm going through corners, which is slow but fun. Okay, so she's slow. She's a little bit beat up. She might be a little ugly, but we're gonna fix that. And she's home. Now let's work on this little pig. Okay, so we've got the Civic on the lift for the first time. And before we go getting into all the fun stuff, we're gonna give this thing a bit of an inspection, see how much damage there is on the car, see if there are any surprises and anything we need to fix that we don't already know about. The first thing we're gonna do, I got a pry bar. We're just gonna put it under the tire against the ground and go up and down. And this will help us check for ball joints, but all of these tests that we're gonna do, if you've got really bad parts, you, you'll probably notice. So let's see how it feels. Not bad. So what you're looking for there is like some clicking at the ball joints. Uh, this has an upper and a lower ball joint. And when I do this, there's no like play. So they, they feel okay. Next thing we're gonna do is grab the tire at three and nine and just shake back and forth. And that feels pretty bad. There's something wrong there. So this should be pretty solid. You'll get a little bit of movement, but there shouldn't be any play, any like clunkiness. And I am getting some pretty significant clunkiness. So that's usually indicative of a tie rod. Not sure if it's gonna be inner or outer, but you can kind of poke your head under there and look. Seems like the inner, or maybe the whole steering rack is moving. That sounds like a lot of noise. So we'll have to dig a little deeper to find out exactly what's wrong but now we know that something's up with our steering system. And up next, we're gonna grab the tire at 12 and six and go like this. And this will help us check for a worn wheel bearing or you'll feel some play if you've got really worn control arm bushings. And I do feel some play. Oh yeah. Okay, so this Civic has dual wishbone suspension. So there's an A-arm up here and one down below. And just at first glance when I do that, I can see the whole control arm moving and it looks like at least the forward bushing is totally blown out. What I'm hoping is that it's just those bushings that's causing this play and that there's no issue with our wheel bearing and that we won't have to replace the wheel bearings. But there's only one way to find out. Ah! All right, now that we got the car up in the air and the wheels off, we're gonna check the rest of the suspension bushings and see what we're dealing with. So to do that, we've just got this pry bar and we're gonna, you know, poke some stuff. So first, let's look at some bushings that we know are bad. We could tell that our upper control arm bushings were pretty whooped, so let's shake them around and see what they look like. And you can see we've got a lot of play there, but I think we're also gonna have some side to side. Yeah, that shouldn't do that. And then at our front lower control arm, at the front bushing, you can see it's pretty much, looks like it's entirely separated. And if you look, you can see that it's ripped all the way around the middle. 
So it's probably pretty disconnected, which doesn't lead to great handling or good feel. Oh, this looks like an okay bushing. I don't see any tears, and it actually kind of looks relatively new. Let's give it a little pry. Yeah, now that's kind of what you want to see from a, you know, like a factory rubber bushing. It's not flopping around, there's no clunking, no noises, no tears, it looks okay. But we're gonna replace it anyway. Okay, so now that we know that we've got a bunch of bad bushings, it's time to go about replacing them. Let's look at the parts we're gonna be replacing them with and compare them to the stock stuff. First, we'll start with the coilovers. This is the stock one, nothing special about it, but we're gonna be replacing it with these Feel 441s. These are basically Feel's entry-level coilover. They're damping adjustable 30 ways, but it's uh, it's one-way adjustment, so rebound and compression is tied together, because again, these are pretty entry-level coilover, but you still get a lot of nice features. You get ride height adjustability, you get preload adjustability, you get a nice spherical bearing top hat, and you do get the Swift springs, which should help with handling, and they are valved for this chassis. They should really improve the handling of this car, so I'm excited about these. So we just gotta stick them in there. So this is the stock control arm setup, and you can see we've got rubber bushings in three places here, one of which is totally gone, and we will be reusing this arm here, but replacing this outer arm like that, and this bushing out here like this. I was just looking at our kind of blown out rubber bushings here. These are cheap, they're good at reducing noise, vibration, and harshness, and they wear pretty well. They're good for for most people. But you can see how much they move, especially when they're worn out. And the problem with that is that that causes a lot of deflection and twisting in your suspension. And it changes your suspension geometry when you're in hard corners, which is really when you want your suspension geometry to be working the best. So we're gonna be replacing those. Okay, and of course you could just press these out and replace them with new rubber bushings, with polyurethane bushings, or with spherical bushings like we're gonna be using. So we just got these, they're nicely powder coated and they come with spherical bushings already installed. And basically that's just a big metal ball in a housing, which allows for rotation and angular movement so that these can move with your suspension like they need to, but because it's a metal ball in a housing, there's really no deflection. So when you're under hard cornering, nothing deflects in any unpredictable way and you get to actually make use of that alignment that you paid for. Okay, cool, well, that was easy. Now I'll flip this thing around and replace this bushing. All right, same thing here at the rear bushing for the lower control arm. It's rubber, so we're gonna replace it with a spherical unit. Now that bushing looks like it's in fine shape, but even a brand new rubber bushing will deflect a lot under load. Not the case for these. Okay, we've got our front lowers put together, so they're the first thing that's gonna go on the car. This is the stock upper stamped steel piece with our blown out bushings. And the new one is this. The big advantages of this upper control arm is that you get adjustability in terms of camber and caster. Where you don't really have any adjustability on this stock upper arm, we will have a bunch of adjustability to be able to dial our alignment in exactly as we want it. So I'm gonna slap these in real quick. And then the last thing we're gonna do to the front of this car, we've got this sweet Cusco strut brace. The point of this is basically just to tie together the two strut towers to keep them from flexing under hard cornering loads. The only problem is that when I put it up here, it sits pretty good, but there are no holes where it seems like there should be holes. So for a minute, I thought that this was for the wrong car or something, but it turns out that most of these EG Civics have holes there, but this trim level 
the CX doesn't have the holes. So, no big deal. I mean, what do you do when you don't have holes, but you need some? You guessed it, drill some. So that's what we're gonna do, and then pretty much done with the front. All right, this car might be a bit of a clunker, but it doesn't have very much rust. So since we're drilling holes and exposing bare metal, I'm gonna hit him with some paint real quick. So far, so good. Let's see, moment of truth. Looks like it worked. Woo! All right, the front is basically done, so now it's time to start on the rear. All right, here at the rear, uh, we've already got pretty much all the stock stuff taken out that we need to take out. I know it's in a little bit better shape than the fronts. No fully blown out bushings or anything like that, but we still got some stuff to replace. Obviously, we're gonna be using the same coilovers as the front, these fields. And then we've got lower control arms from Megan, basically the same deal as the control arms in the front. Although these are aluminum, which is pretty nice, but the big thing is that they've got spherical bearings for bushings, so that'll tighten things up in the rear. But the thing I wanna talk about at the rear is the thing I've always wondered about. This dang bar. And you know, this is obviously one from Megan, but there are many like it, and you always see them hanging out something like that on the backs of Civics. And I never really knew why that was, what the purpose of that was. And it turns out it's actually got two purposes. First off, this is our rear subframe, and it's pretty flimsy, or so they say. So this helps reinforce it, strengthen it up, and uh, you know, it just gives it a little bit of extra bracing. But it also does a second thing. These cars, especially the lower trim models, don't have sway bars, okay, like at all. This car doesn't have a sway bar in the front or the rear. But adding this in the rear gives us places to mount a sway bar so we can add one to the car. And now you may have noticed we didn't do that in the front. We still have no sway bar in the front, but this is a front wheel drive car, which usually has some understeer. So adding a big sway bar to the rear with this kit will allow us to dial in a little bit more oversteer or close to it and uh, make this car feel a lot better. And now I know what it is. And so do you. So now we just gotta install it. Okay, so I've got news. To install the sway bar that we just talked about, uh, we need to remove the muffler. This massive muffler here, it kind of intersects the area where the sway bar needs to mount. So luckily the exhaust comes apart right here, so I can just take the muffler off, but this thing is gonna sound probably pretty bad. But that's okay, we'll fix it in the future. We'll get a better exhaust. So that's a brace? Also sway bar mount. Yes. Dude, I'm so stoked for this. this is yeah, gonna be it's awesome. going to be a hoot. Well, we've got our brace and our sway bar hanging all tightened up. So now we can start throwing in these control arms and then the coilers. Yeah, these are solid bushings on there. Yeah, they are literally, they're spherical. So if you give it a push, you'll get it to break free. One of the last things we're gonna do in the rear is replace these arms, which go right there with these. And the difference is, well, not only are these stamped steel and these are tubular, but these are adjustable. And that'll give us adjustment over camber, which is pretty important for dialing in a good performance-oriented alignment. Okay, and here we've got a rear strut brace from Cusco. Matches the one in the front. We're just gonna tie together our two strut towers to add a little bit of rigidity and of course a little bit of steeze. Well, I was afraid that might be the case. We gotta trim the interior a little bit. Not my best work, but it works. Okay, now this thing is ready to go to the alignment shop. And then we'll take it back to the streets. 
Let her rip. Oh yeah, I forgot the muffler is off. You can't even tell. Rev it. Damn, it sounds awesome. So we're back in the canyons to rip up and down the hill to see if installing all these expensive suspension parts on such a cheap car was actually worth it. Let's go for a drive. All right, the first thing I noticed is how much less body roll there is. This thing stays way flatter through all the corners and feels great. I mean, it, it makes it feel much more predictable, but it's way more fun now. I mean, it's, it's like a go-kart. So everything we put on this car is a fairly mid-range part. You know, we could have spent way more money and we could have spent less. But I think the mid-range is really where the sweet spot is. That's where you get the most bang for your buck. And I'm super happy with what we chose. But it's gonna be a lot of fun to wrench on this thing and get into the Honda world a little bit. And I think we made a big first step. Oh, this thing feels so much better. I hope you guys had fun watching this video. It was fun making it. I look forward to doing a lot more with this car, and I hope you guys do too. Let me know in the comments what you want to see us do next. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to like the video, leave a comment. You can follow me on Instagram at Zach Job, and you can follow Donut at Donut Media. See you guys next time.